Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can add caching support to your Spring Boot application. For cash provider, I'm going to use Caffeine Cash. Now let's start the project by creating it from start.spring.io. Here I'm going to select Gradle project, language calling, use the latest version of Spring Boot. Put your project group name and artifact name. And for dependency, I'm going to use web, JPA. MySQL cache and that's it now generate the project and open it with your favorite IDE I'm going to use IntelliJ IDEA so by default you get your project like this now I have to add the dependency uh, for the caffeine so let's add that first Next, in the application properties, I'll be adding my database information. So it will be different for your system. And this is just to show the SQL query that is running on the database on the console. Now in the application, you will get something like this. Now uh, to create a basic uh, application with database connection, I have already created some video about that. So see uh, those video if you are unfamiliar with it. So here what I have done is just created a, a student class and use that as a reference to communicate with the, our database. So uh, let's look into the database student class. So here is a student class with some student name. And if you want to see the uh, data yield, DDL for this table so this is it with one field id and uh, name id is begin auto increment primary key and name is text so here in this application uh, so these are pretty stra uh, straightforward spring data based application where you have entity and the interface that extend uh, crude repository to communicate with the data and then created a service that uh, uh, use this interface to communicate with the database to get some data. Here you can see it is getting the data by ID and here a update method that is getting the existing ID, uh, existing student by ID that is provided in the method and updating that student with a uh, student that is provided. So currently it has only one property that's why it is just getting the student, existing student and getting it because it's an optional uh, student and uh, updating only one parameter and finally saving it in the database. So that's simple and uh, in the controller, it's just a simple controller with uh, two mapping. One is for ID, uh, so where it is getting uh, a student by ID with simple student service dot get a student by ID. And uh, I have also added this uh, update. Uh, it's a get mapping, but in production, definitely it will be post or patch. Uh, so where I'm just randomly updating the student name with this random UEID and just calling this student service dot update with uh, the new student uh, with the new student information and the uh, previous student ID. So this is pretty straightforward. Let's run it and see what it does before adding the caching support to your uh, to our application okay so application is running now i'm going to use postman to make some call so uh, I, as you have seen in the database i have three students so when i call with uh, id one two three uh, i should get consecutive id and if i call two i get the two id and subsequently but notice in the console when I am calling this um, SQL query is executing in the database and I am getting the data. Now uh, every time I call uh, this ID2, I am getting this information and uh, this query is executing. But this is not very efficient way to do things because uh, we are getting this inform same information from the database every time. So this communication with database is unnecessary. If we can uh, keep this in the memory and serve it without uh, making query in the database, that would be more efficient um, since it's the same data. 
so that's what i'm going to do by adding this caching support in our application uh, so to do that uh, initial things we have already done which is adding this dependency caffeine dependency now in our application first thing first we have to add the enable caching in our application with the annotation enable caching next we have to add a configuration class where we need to create a bean of type cache manager And it's gonna simply return caffeine cache manager with some property so in this case we are caching this student information so that's why we are putting this student cache name so you can add other uh, name over here if you have other uh, caching uh, object you want to cache I add some property to it for example is null value allowed or not so I'm gonna put that as false and also set some other caffeine properties like maximum size how many cache will be in the memory at a time so that's 100 so based on your system you can definitely change it and when it's going to expire so I'm gonna expire it after one hour so that's the system to set up the cache manager now uh, we have to add it um, the enable it in the service so let's enable it with annotation cache config and put the cache names so we are again using only one and now to cache an object we have to add the cacheable annotation And that's it now if we run the application and make the post call so here you can see in the first time uh, when we are doing the post call it is getting the information from the database as it is executing this select query in the database but when I do it for the second time we are not seeing any uh, log here because it's now loading from the memory but remember we have added this endpoint to update our object with random name so let's use that to update the name and see what happens now we have updated and you can see it from the console that update has been done and if we look into the database we see this new value is also added but if we call this endpoint again we see that we are getting the old value where we should get this new value that's uh, not we are getting so that is uh, an issue uh, which we need to fix so here what I am going to do is update only the uh, student which one has been updated uh, and remaining one can be same so for uh, like ID3 this thing uh, can stay same uh, so if you look into the log look into the log that it's not calling it again because we have already executed this one but for this two where it is updated so we need to execute a command so that it's updated in the memory as well so let's see how we can do that so for this we have to do uh, a very simple cache edit so when our object is being updated we have to evict it from our cache and we want to uh, evict it using this id field so to uh, specify that we have to mention the key and inside with the hashtag we have to mention the key here in this case it's just id and uh, we want to cache it in the same way 
so that when it is saving in the memory it's saving by the id also when it is evicting i mean when it, the object is getting updated uh, in that case it is also will be evicted from the memory using this key as well so with that let's restart the application and let's make it previous one update it and go to the postman now it is behaving similarly like before so we are getting all three but next time when we are calling everything is coming from the memory so caffeine cache is handling that now if we want to update let's say student one so this time only when we are uh, calling this two we should not get a uh, select query so we are not getting that but since we have updated one when we query for this uh, one again we should see a query in the log and the updated value should come and when you call and definitely you can see the select query is happening and also we are getting the new value as it is in the database so as you can see it's the same thing we are getting in the front end so that's it that's all i wanted to show you in this video how caching works what cache is how it can help us uh, i hope you liked it if you have any question feel free to ask in the comment below i will be uploading this code on github and post the link on the video description so that's all for this video have a nice day bye bye